This episode is brought to you by HP+. In a world full of smart devices, isn't it about time your printer got smart too? Now printing is smart with HP+. And the HP Smart app is how it all happens. You can print from your phone with just a tab, no matter where you are. Even from your garage slash home office slash yoga studio. Huh, that is smart. HP+. Learn more about smart printing at hp.com slash smart. Hey everybody, welcome to the latest episode of All Too Real. My name is Michael E. Cullen II, and with me as always is... Is Matthew... Kirstie... Haas. That is a beautiful name. It is. Actually, it's interesting, Kirstie, her last name's Alan, right? Yeah. You're still, well, my oh, middle her, name is no, it's, it's actually no, it's Allie. Allie, okay. Well, yeah. my middle name is Alan, so okay. Yeah. Uh, I don't know why I agree with you. Quite... I meant to not agree with you, but I. <laughs> <laughs> I shouldn't say my full name on there. God, okay. Uh, so, um, also his address is. Um, no, yeah, just... here's my social security number and my bank routing number. <laughs> yes, <laughs> his mother's maiden name is. Um, no. <laughs> This is my first pet, my favorite high school teacher. Uh, yeah. His first car was a... Um, no. <laughs> I love that on um, on Facebook when they have those things that are like, you know, um, what are your, uh, you know, what was the, what was your, your, your favorite cartoon character growing up? And you're <laughs> like, I'm not going to answer that because... <laughs> That may or may not be one of my passwords. You know, it is, but you know what I mean. I'm just saying. <laughs> it's so stupid. You know, it's like, <laughs> yeah, because they'll, they'll they'll have those surveys on on Facebook that I think are just basically there as a phishing scam to try to get your oh, yeah. passwords. Um, and then you, and then all of a sudden you've got like everybody on your timeline has filled them out, and you're just like, okay. <laughs> I thought my friends were smarter than this. Um, <laughs> well, it's like it's like the people who post that little. Well, they don't really do it that much anymore. But when they post that, they like Facebook privacy. Like you're not allowed to. I'm like, oh yeah, Facebook is really gonna take you. Like, oh man, like they they posted a status update. Oh, our hands are tied now. I'm like, no, like <laughs> they're a multi-billion-dollar company. Like. That's that, that. That's just as legally binding as if you post a video on YouTube, and right before the video, you say "no copyright infringement" and in, in, you know, um, meant or whatever people put up there yeah. all the time. And then they and then they play a Beatles song throughout their video, and you're exactly. like, "Yeah, you're not going to be legally allowed to do this, people." Um, <laughs> I know. Yeah. So, <clears throat> anyways, <laughs> so today on the show, we are covering. The short-lived uh, sitcom Kirsty, um, the pilot for that on our pilot error review series here. Um, Kirsty was a television sitcom starring Kirsty Alley, known for Cheers and Veronica's Closet, um, that aired on TV Land from December fourth of two thousand thirteen. Until February 26th of 2014. And then TV Land canceled the show on July 29th, 2014. So, yes. There were 12 episodes. Good times. Good times. Yep. Well, actually, good times lasted a lot longer than this show. Oh, yeah. yeah. Definitely. Dynamite. Um, so, um, 
<clears throat> this show stars Kirstie Alley as Madison Maddie Banks, um, who is a Broadway star, Eric Peterson as Arlo Barth, Maddie's biological son, Rhea Perlman as Thelma Katz, Maddie's personal secretary, and Michael Richards as Frank Baxter, Maddie's driver. So, um, yep. Yep. Decent cast of has-beens and uh, future B. <laughs> Hopefully. Because I, um, Eric Peterson is currently on the TV show Kevin Can Fuck Himself. Um, <laughs> on AMC. Which I watched the pilot of and it was pretty good, so. There's hope for this guy. <laughs> Um, the show was, uh, the pilot, that is, was, uh, directed by Andy Cadiff and written by Marco Panette, or Panetti, I don't know, it's P-E-N-N-E-T-T-E, so, Hmm. yeah. Okay, so... What do we got going on in this episode here, Matt? Um, you know, it kind of opens up with, like, uh, Kirstie's character, I think, finishing up uh, maybe one of her plays or something. And, you know, she's got all these people, like, wanting autographs and just, you know, all these accolades, you know, because she's, like, a famous theater actress or whatever. And then, uh... Her driver's really not there to pick her up yet because he's apparently doing something else. And he's uh, Michael Richard. Yeah, he's he's taking um, tourists around New York City while he's waiting to pick up Kirstie Alley's character. That's right. Yeah, because yes. he's trying to make extra money. Yeah, and he's doing some you know Kramer esque things of like you know shaking his body and dropping yeah. a sandwich, or whatever he's but, doing. Like, but okay. he he wasn't quite as much of Kramer in this as he was in the Michael Richards show. Exactly. I was. Yeah. I. I. I make made a note of that too earlier. Yeah. Like he's got a little bit of the, like the body shakes here and there, but it's not personality wise, not, um, not so much. Um. So yeah, he picks her up or whatever, and she. You know, they had this little gag where he's like, "Oh, I was gonna go swing by the you know some world famous deli or whatever," and then she's like, "Get back here!" And he's like, "Well, maybe pick me up." Uh, Pastrami, or I don't know what she said, yeah. something like that. I don't know. <laughs> and, uh, so you know, he, he takes her back to her apartment or whatever. And, uh, you know, she's talking to her, um, her I don't know, her agent or something, Rhea, Rhea Perlman's character. I forgot. Well, um, that's her personal secretary. That's right, her personal. And then, uh, they, you know, they get a knock on the door. And then it's that, you know, this guy shows up and it's, um, you know, it turns out that it's, you know, her biological son. And, you know, at first they're like, you know, don't know if it's like some scam artist or, you know, whoever. And then, uh, you know, eventually, you know, she, they, well, because they had this whole thing where, you know, apparently he had a very specific birthmark. So they like, made him take his pants down. I, I, I do want to point out that the show she's in on Broadway is called Worst Case Scenario. <laughs> and I just want to point out that I don't know if they saw the irony in that. <clears throat> well, it could have been like a, you know, a little thing, like a joke or maybe like a. I'm just saying that this show is the worst case scenario. Um, oh, and I, uh, <laughs> no, I thought you were saying that her having a son was the worst case scenario. Like, that's pretty mean. No, no, that's not <laughs> what I'm saying. I'm saying that the show <laughs> itself. It, it's. Yeah, it's one of those. It's, this is why it's hard to talk about because I, I made a note of this too. So like, occasionally we we'll review a show that's not terrible but not good. So then it's hard to talk about because when something's so bad, it's easy to make fun of, right? You know. Yeah. But like, when you got a show that's just bland, it's like how how can you really? It's a it's a worst case scenario. Anybody? It is a worst case scenario. That's <laughs> yes. what it is. Because I'm sitting there watching it, like on um, last Sunday, and I, I'm like, "Oh, that was kind of funny, I guess." But then it's like, 
like a little chuckle. It's not like, oh, okay, that was all I right. I mean, it's then, it's. I mean, I'll I'll go into it more in my review at the end, where how I feel. Mm-hmm. But it's it's kind of one of those things that you could have on in the background and not kill yourself for having on in the background. Right. Yeah. Exactly. But yeah, you would never. Exactly. But you would never like look up from your telephone if you're scrolling your texts or something, and you know. <laughs> You know, if yeah, you're, if you're exactly. reading your emails or something, you're not going to, you know, get surprised and be like, oh, I wonder what Kirsty's doing. No. <laughs> no. Right. <laughs> yeah. Um, <clears throat> her her co-star in the show, in the, in, the, in, the, in the Broadway show she was in, Worst Case Scenario here, um, is uh, played by Christopher McDonald, who um, it's recently been mm-hmm. announced is going to be in um, the, uh, is it us? The, the Secret Wars or something like that. I, the um, the new Marvel show that's coming out soon. So awesome! Yeah, and he also you know he played uh, Shooter McGavin in um, <laughs> yeah. So yeah. Yep. <laughs> so there we go. He was in this too. So <laughs> yeah, he, yeah. He was like the basically like the male counterpart like it's conceited as, as yeah he is, a pompous you know, asshole basically too like, yeah they're all they're all cheering and they both say oh they're they're cheering for me you know type of thing mm-hmm. uh you know? and uh yeah i'm trying to remember what else. i know that he shows him his birthmark because they made him take his pants down which is weird and then uh because like you just you know you meet you meet your biological mother for the first time and she already makes you take your pants down it's kind of weird okay and then um but yeah, the, true. And, and when they're when they're at this place, it, it appears okay. You got you got you got Thelma, that's uh, Rhea Perlman's character. You've got this driver with a shady past, Frank, played by Michael Richards. Mm-hmm. Um, and then you have a really good-looking chef, played by uh, um, Giles um, Marini. Um, and it's one of those situations in a show where. The supporting characters seem to have no lives of their own <laughs> that don't involve the main character. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> it's yeah, like... Yeah, no, I do. Yeah, Weird, because like... cause it's, you know, in, in some shows you can tell, like, well, you know, somebody has a family outside of the storyline or somebody, you know... Because, honestly, if if anything, any, any good movie or sitcom or play or book or anything like that every character should be the star of their own movie in their mind you know what i mean like if if, if, even if you're playing the third guy from the left in the background you should be able to just stop following the main actor and then go and follow that guy yeah and and he would actually have a life it might not be as interesting as the (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> but but as an like as a as an actor myself, I would always try to come up with a backstory, even from like the one line I had in the play or something like that, to try to figure out why this guy is on stage at this point, you know. And you know, try to know in my mind what he was doing before he walked on stage, and what he's doing after he walks off stage. You know, like I, I played a cab driver who was kind of a, you know bigger part in a, in a play called Funny Money um, when I was younger. But uh, I knew in my mind that he had a family and in my mind he had a young a young baby son at home. Wasn't in the script at all, but I had that in my head, you know? <laughs> yeah, I mean, it makes yeah. sense because you, if your character <clears throat> you know, dad, then you yeah, I mean, you don't have to tell anyone about it, but you're thinking yeah. about it. Mm-hmm. That's what... Uh, I always forget his name. Um, uh, I think his name was something Bigley Jr. or something like oh, that. Ed, Ed Bigley Jr. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, when they were doing the mighty, a mighty wind, <clears throat> he was just like his method was just like <clears throat> he would just read like random books about stuff like that ha- didn't even have anything to do like with his character. Yeah. But like, like for example, like he was like at one point was like this reading about like the history of plumbing, like indoor plumbing that had nothing to do with like his actual character, like at least like on the outside, but like inwardly because like that character was like really weird and stuff like that. So like it just kind of in his mind made sense to like study that kind of stuff, you know? Yeah. 
like this is weird things about people like mm-hmm. where whatever like gets your creativity flowing like just how your brain works like you know i need to study but, this even though my but, character really isn't about this like but here in this show i get the feeling that when michael richards walks off the set he disappears yeah you know what i mean it's like mm-hmm. his character just doesn't exist the chef mm-hmm. the chef just walks into the walks into the kitchen and he's just waiting there for his next line you know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> it's just... It, it, I mean, like, with Fresh Prince and stuff, even, like, um, you know, um, what's his name? Butler, is it Jeffrey? Um, Jeffrey, yeah. Yeah. He, he, you know, he, at least, like, I mean, yeah, they didn't really show him doing much after work or whatever, but, like, he specifically had, like, he was off the clock at 8 p.m., and he didn't have to do anything after that. Like, he would go to his room or whatever. And he you was... still you still felt like you, you didn't know what he was doing, but you felt like, okay, maybe he's going in his room and he's watching, you know, a, a rerun of MASH in his, in his room or something. You know what I mean? You felt like maybe he was going right. off to do something, you know? You didn't think that he just walked off, walked out of the Banks' house or into his room or whatever he was doing, and... He just stopped being, you know, you felt like he was doing something in another room. Yeah. But like, but like the yeah, chef exactly. walks into the kitchen and you just feel like he's just standing there waiting for him, his next cue. Because it's so badly written. Um, <laughs> yeah. Yep. It's basically a phone yep. and they're phoned in performances because of that. So anyways, um, <laughs> I guess we're going in. We went into a little bit of a review there, but still, um. <laughs> okay, so, so so they they basically find out, um, you know, through this birthmark, because they had to take his pants down and shit, um, <laughs> that Arlo, who is the the son, um, is a this dorky guy who's a Civil War reenactment and reenactor. <laughs> um, yeah, they realize that he isn't after money; he's just after a relationship with his mother. And he wants to get to know her better, and so she, uh, she's like, you know, conflicted by this thing and doesn't really want to. So she basically gives him her autobiography <laughs> to read, so she can learn about him. Learn about her, I mean. <laughs> so so he can learn wow. about her, I mean, not she can learn about him, but the other way. Yeah, around. yeah, yeah, exactly. yeah. Um, and he also he works at a donut shop. And, you know, she just can't understand that. What was the name of it? It was like a really weird, weird name. Um, oh, shoot. Oh, something. It was some kind of pun. Um, yeah. Oh, well. Uh, so It's so memorable that I totally forgot it. So. <laughs> yeah, me too. Uh, yeah. Oh, well. Uh, I know that they, said they, like, they thought it was like a club or like, or something like that. Yeah. Um, Oh well, yeah. It doesn't matter. <laughs> so, um, do you want to take a quick break here, Matt, and we'll come back and talk about the rest of this episode? Yeah, sure. Okay, we'll be right back. What is Gen X? What is the Silent Generation? What do generations have in common? Hi, I'm Trish the Dish from the Gen X Voice Podcast, and I invite you to listen to conversations I have with folks from different generations, backgrounds, beliefs, and experiences in an attempt to see what connects rather than divides us. Even though Gen X has been called slackers, Karens, or not mentioned at all in some cases, we are the bridge generation, so I feel compelled to do my part to destroy ageism by bringing all these voices together. And, as a bonus, each guest gets to answer some 80s questions at the end of each show. So download and listen to Gen X Voice today on Apple, Spotify, Amazon, or wherever you listen to podcasts. And let's see how much we have in common after all. Hi, this is Catherine, host of a new fashion podcast, The Real Fashion School Dropout. Join me as I interview guest every week in the fashion and beauty space and we gossip on all things fashion and beauty and even get into some personal stories of their journey in the industry you can find us on apple spotify 
pretty much wherever you get your podcast. Hope to see you there. And we are back. So, Kirsty. Yep. The greatest sitcom ever to be on television with the name Kirsty. <laughs> I'm hoping the only one that was ever on the air named Kirsty. Probably. Yes. <laughs> so, um,. So Maddie, Kirsty's character, <clears throat> she's got this uh like attitude towards her son. You know, she doesn't want to have anything to do with him because she put him up for adoption because she was basically not ready to have a kid because her career was taking off. And uh He's this, uh, you know, Civil War reenactor, donut shop employee. Um, yeah. <laughs> so, um, so basically, she doesn't also, she also doesn't really want him around because her friends think she's 36. And he's 26, mm -hmm. so do the math there. Um, <laughs> um, so basically, Frank, also, Frank, her driver, played by Michael Richards, keeps insisting that he could just, you know, bump the kid off <laughs> to prevent any Kill possible him. complications. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like you do. Yeah. If I had a kid come to my door tomorrow, um, I expect you, Matt, to offer to kill the kid, okay? Yeah, sure. You know, if you're a true friend, mm -hmm. that's what you'll do. And then I'll, I'll send a note to his parents saying, Merry Christmas, <laughs> I'm dead, I'm, I'm dead. Yes, that's what you do. <laughs> that's how you that's do it. <laughs> Great inside joke between the two of us that no one yep. else is going to find funny, but we do. And that's <laughs> all that matters, Matt. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Merry Christmas, Mom and Dad. I'm dead. Um, yes. <laughs> that's how you do it. Anyway, so... Yep. Um, so, this is like... I mean, it was on TV land, <laughs> so it's got this whole, like, feel of an older sitcom, even though it's a modern sitcom. So it doesn't really know what it wants to be. Um, so, so Maddie has a, later on has, a, has like this party with a bunch of her Broadway, you know, friends and cast members and stuff like that there. And, uh, Arlo shows up. And uh, she doesn't know how to react to this and tell people who it is. So she kind of like rushes him into the kitchen <laughs> with the with the chef who's presumably just been sitting there since the last scene he was in. <laughs> because I know nothing about him except for the fact that he's her chef. Yep. Yep. He just. Lives in the kitchen, just waits for yep. you know his next line. It's like, oh, you want me to make you something? I've just been sitting in my chair taking a cat nap. Okay. Yep. See, I don't even think he makes anything. I think somebody else makes it and gives it to him so he can serve it and pretend he made it. It. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Wait, that's probably what really happens because he's an actor, not a chef. <laughs> um. Anyway, so. <laughs> right. I mean, my thing is, if you're gonna do this. Why don't you just cast, like, Emeril Lagasse as the chef? Because <laughs> at, yeah, be cool. at least then we know he's a real chef. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. 
no offense to the actor, I'm just saying, the writing did him no favors. He's probably right. a wonderful actor. Oh, God. This, sh- <laughs> this show hurt my head, Matt. Um, and not in a way that was like, oh, this is so bad it's hurting my head. It was more in a, why the fuck am I watching this sort of way? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I watched it like two weeks ago, and I'm already forgetting things. <laughs> um, so, I know they had, they had this party. He's there, and then he, he, reala- he basically realizes that she doesn't want to have anything to do with him. So he goes back to his life, you know, and at the donut shop and whatnot. And I'm assuming he has other things in his life, too, but they didn't really give me that either. Except for the Civil War reenactment. That's yeah. about it. Uh-huh. I mean, there might be more development in the other 11 episodes that I'm not going to watch. <laughs> but um, <laughs> unless I get really desperate for something to watch on TV. <laughs> But in the age of streaming, I don't think that's going to happen, Matt. No. No. Got too much to go on, yeah. I'd rather just rewatch an episode of How I Met Your Mother or some other good sitcom. Yeah. You know. Um, anyways, uh, so what happens next? Do you remember? <clears throat> yeah, I do. Um, after, yeah, after she basically makes him wear, like, one of the waitstaff uniforms to make it seem like he's a waiter instead of, you know, her son that came to the party. Yeah, he goes back to the donut shop or whatever. She finds out where he works and tries to apologize to him, but he's not, he's really not having it. And um, his, his co-worker is, like, not really nice and is saying mean things about him. So then... Mandy kind of gets protective then about that because the co-workers just like you know being sarcastic so then they get into some big fight where they're throwing donuts at each other well I think Mandy threw a donut at her at his co-worker first again I don't even know if his co-worker had a name or anything because they didn't really you know the, the co-worker's yeah. name was was Maureen and she, uh, oh, okay. no, and, and, and I'm just making this shit up. And, and, uh, she, uh, oh. <laughs> she, she, she lives with her mother and hopes to one day own the donut shop. And, okay. uh, yeah. And, um, she really likes to watch Disney movies, um, specifically the little mermaid. That's her favorite. And, <laughs> um, also, um, on Tuesdays, she always likes to go to Saks Fifth Avenue and just window shop. She doesn't, mm-hmm. you know, buy anything. She just likes to look at the beautiful dresses that she hopes okay. to one day own. See, this is something that they could have done with a character. Not saying it should have been this character, but I'm just saying you can create character development and somehow maybe, yeah. maybe you know, make this happen. I don't know how. <clears throat> yep. It doesn't have to be on the screen either, but, you know, just give me something that makes me feel like these people are real and not just mannequins or, or like, some kind of, uh, you know, Chuck E. Cheese animatronic that just comes on when I press a button and they fucking sing a song or whatever, you know? <laughs> just saying. Yeah. Okay. I mean, that would have been more entertaining if that had happened in the show at one point. Like a Civil War reenactment but made with animatronic people. That would have been kind of cool. That would have been awesome. Right. Yes. Like, yeah, so they get into this big donut fight, you know, makes the whole floor a mess, so then he's, like, got to clean it up or whatever, so he's pissed off about that. And then Maddie goes into some big speech or whatever about, you know, how she's sorry, blah, blah, blah. And, you know, that she wants to know him more i think that's when it happened and then we have our, i guess he goes yeah we have our other conflict the, there where he doesn't want to make up with her yeah yeah exactly because he's pissed off at her for rejecting him like two times in the past two days or whatever and then um then he goes back to her place or whatever and then basically she's gonna make like a project out of him i guess or something 
like that. Which again, that's well, that's that, a great thing. That, that happens. I think that happens at the end after because oh, um, okay. because I think that uh, he he gets invited to her play first, doesn't he? Oh yeah, that's right. And then oh yeah, that's where she makes the big speech. Yeah, she makes play. a big speech. They're trying to they're trying to lower the curtain on her and Christopher McDonald's characters, and uh, she does this big heartfelt speech to her son on stage and he keeps Christopher McDonald keeps trying to end the show basically and then um, after that then in the dressing room is when she makes this like you know saying that she's gonna make the project and everything and then blah 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 Frank comes in and says something stupid and then (laughs) I don't even remember but yeah and then eventually the credits roll yep and that's the show, which I think is hilarious, right? So, you know, she finally, you know, wants to know her son. And then her first thing is, I don't like who you are. I'm going to turn you into a project. Oh, that's, that's, yep. okay, that's nice. Uh, and I'm pretty sure that's <laughs> probably what the rest of the season's about, is her trying to, her trying to yeah. make him into something better. And he, then eventually realizing, well, maybe he's just okay the way he is. Yep. Yep. That's exactly what's going to happen. I'm not going to watch it, but that's what's no. going to happen throughout the 12 episodes. Maybe I'll watch the 12th episode just to see. Just to see what happens, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's kind of like those people that'll read the first chapter and the last chapter of a novel just to, you know, find out that the butler did it or whatever. And, um, yeah, exactly. yeah, the, yeah. So, I don't know. I mean, I know it's quick, Matt, but do you want to take another break and then, uh, and then we'll wrap things up after the break about our feelings about this episode and maybe some uh, trivia and some reviews of the show. Yeah. Okay, we'll be right back, folks. Need a new podcast to listen to? Well, why not check out the Super Podcast from the Super Network at supermarcy.com where we discuss films and pop culture and we do monthly fan-voted commentaries. We are available on all major podcasting platforms. And like Arlo after 26 years, we are back. (laughs) Oh, God, Matt. This episode felt like it was 26 years long. Yes. I, I think I want to call my mom and tell her I love her. That's nice. Yeah. I don't know if this sitcom made me feel like that, but I just think I want to. Um, <laughs> thank her for not giving me up for adoption and becoming a, broad, yeah. a Broadway star. <laughs> <laughs> God. Anyway, so um, <laughs> so basically, there's no real trivia about this thing except for Christy Alley's character. The only trivia they have is that Christy Alley's character crossed over into an episode of Hot in Cleveland on TV Land as well, which was a much longer running sitcom on TV Land. Yeah. Yes. So, um, you want me to read some reviews here, Matt? Sure. Okay. Do you want to... Okay. Do you want a 1 out of 10, a 9 out of 10, a 3 out of 10? What do you want me to start with here, Matt? Start with the lower ones. Okay, here's a 1 out of 10. (laughs) The headline is just Kirsty. Um, And this is by G. Vase. On December 9th of 2013. <laughs> I honestly don't know where they dug Kirsty up from. Because she's aged and should really climb back into the closet. Which was a pun because she was on Veronica's closet. So I thought that was, okay, yeah. that was kind of funny. Um, her attempt at acting and humor is just awful. And the sun, <laughs> really. Did they decide to get someone with absolutely no looks whatsoever to match the same skill set as Kirsty? Come on, after two episodes of this trollop, please just bench this series. It's really bad. Take some lessons from Mom, Trophy Wife, or Brooklyn Nine-Nine. Um, 
fresh and different and funny, not Kirsty. Common people, we want to be entertained and made to laugh, not feel sorry for aged has-beens. <laughs> Go back to the drawing board. No, wait. Just burn the drawing board. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Wow. Here is... Um, a 3 out of 10. Cancelled after one terrible season. This is by Al B. Fine. On... 3rd of August, 2014. I've watched most of the episodes and have not found anything funny in this over-the-top pathetic attempt to revive washed-up has-been actors' careers. I loved Cheers and Seinfeld and was intrigued by all these actors getting together to get us laughing, but that never happened. (laughs) Even the music was terrible, and the laugh track was just ridiculous, Who laughs and claps hysterically at these quote-unquote jokes, not (laughs) me? The decision to cancel it is the best decision they ever have made. No star power or or quest stars like Travolta or or guest stars. They said quest, but I think they meant guest. (laughs) Guest stars like Travolta or Griffin or Jason Alexander. By the way, that episode was cringeworthy. Could have could save the sinking ship. There are plenty of terrible shows on TV already. One less won't make much of a difference, but at least it will not ruin my love for these actors in much better roles. They're all in their 60s. Maybe it's time to stop. Or maybe their agents should be fired. Wow, that was really kind of harsh even though i hated this show (laughs) but um (laughs) here is a um a 10 out of 10 you want to hear this sure this is 10 out of 10 ignore the haters this was from january 15th of 2014 by tiles by tiley's 64, I don't know, whatever. Um, This show is excellent. The cast has really gelled, and their chemistry is awesome. I love Kirstie Alley's character and how she really is growing to love her son. Eric Peterson as Arlo could very well be the show's breakout star. Eric Peterson is a good actor as well as a nice singer. I especially love the episode that featured Cloris Leachman and Kathy Griffin. The Christmas episode was very touching. Rhea Perlman and Michael Richards really add the perfect comedic touch to the series. I expect TV TV Land to renew this series. All of you haters really need to check yourselves. Mm. Yeah. Do you know what's really sad, Matt? I've had more fun reading these reviews than I did watching the show. (laughs) Wow. Wow. And I just realized that as I read that last review. It is kind of more entertaining when you have just like a synopsis <clears throat> than having to go through. Yeah. So, Matt. Mm. Question. Would you recommend the show to anyone? No. Nope. Nope. Not even an enemy? No, well, maybe an enemy, but um, it's just bland. It's just, there's nothing... Uh, like I said before, if, if something's really bad, it still gives you something to talk about, and it's entertaining because it's so bad. But, like, I don't know, like, shows like this, we've done a few like this, where it's, like, it's just, like, right in the middle. Like, there's no, it's not hot or cold. It's just, yeah. well, it's, like, and it's not in, And it's not it's, hot in Cleveland, yeah. <laughs> Oh, exactly. Yeah, it's uh, or cold in Cleveland. It's just, eh, you know, it in Cleveland, and yeah, <clears throat> and I don't know. Shows like these don't really leave you with any. That's the thing too. Like no, like doesn't leave you with any emotion, any thought. It's just like, I don't, I don't get that kind of 
style of shows. I just don't. But um, apparently, some people think it's good. So, well, I mean, Big Bang Theory was on the air for what nine or ten years. Uh, more. They had twelve seasons. Yeah, um, and yeah, but even that still had better moments than this show did. So. I guess, I guess, you know, I guess. Well, because there's more, for one thing, there's more character. Well, they did because, like you said, they actually showed the characters had lives outside of being together. So you got to see. That is true. The first season or two weren't that bad. Um, yeah. I don't know why I have so much hate for that show. Um, maybe, 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 um, I don't know. I'm trying to think uh, if uh, Kirsty falls into a um two broke girls sort of realm it's worse than that i think yeah Um, that's what i'm thinking but i do still think that two broke girls somehow is the worst sitcom that's ever been on television oh wow even if there are other shows that are worse the the problem i had with two broke girls is their laugh track was louder than anything in the whole fucking world oh So, my other question, Matt, is if you could hang out for one day with either Kirstie Alley, Michael Richards, or Rhea Perlman, which one of the three are you hanging out with? Uh, <clears throat> I, don't, I mean, I, I think... Michael Richards is funnier, but I, he doesn't seem like he's that great of a person. So um, <laughs> probably Rhea Perlman. Yeah, I'm thinking Rhea Perlman just because she's the least controversial of the three. Yeah, <laughs> and plus too, if if you hang out with her, you might also get to hang out with Danny DeVito. So I, don't like, know, I think they're divorced now, but still. Oh, they are okay. But there is a chance, you know. You never know. Yeah. And plus, she's... did I tell you about? No, oh, go sorry, ahead. Go ahead. No, go ahead. Did I ever tell you about the dream I had when I was like in, and it was like the summer of like seventh grade going into eighth grade? <laughs> and I have no idea what brought on this dream. So, like, it was like one of those dreams where it was like in two parts, but the two parts didn't really have anything to do with each other. <clears throat> and, yeah. and, um, the first part was, um, this black limousine pulled into my driveway and like all these guys. Matt? Hello? And rolling. All right, well, apparently Rhea Perlman and Danny DeVito did not want me to tell that dream because the feed just went dead, right, as I mentioned the black limousine. Okay, so hopefully this will work now. <clears throat> so they kidnapped me, this, like, you know, this guy in black suits and stuff like that. Apparently... I knew too much about some situation, so then take me into the car. There's like some like crime lord dude who's like the guy in charge of this kidnapping or whatever. And then they um they take me uh to a jet, like a private jet that this guy owns. And uh they're I guess trying to take me to the Grand Canyon for some reason. I don't know. And then um well, no, that's not what happened. So there was like a guy who I guess who was like a U.S. marshal, but he was like in on the whole scheme, and he he like felt sorry for me, so he he let he gave me a parachute and just told me to jump out at, at like a certain time or whatever. So then they found <laughs> out about that and they they shot and killed him. Um, there was no blood though, because at that point in time I wasn't really watching violent movies. So like like a lot of the James Bond movies at that point, like the Pierce Brosnan, like people got shot but you didn't really see a whole lot of blood so like yeah that's what happened and then um and then my parachute basically took me to like the edge of like the grand canyon like that's as far as i got and then somehow the black limousine was there again like even though we were on the jet but whatever this is dream logic so they get out of the car and like they you know the crime lord gives like his big speech or whatever and then like they push me off the grand canyon but i didn't die for some reason I just ended up on the ground of my um, old, uh, well, not my old, I I was in junior high at the time, so my junior high school, and my junior high school had, like, this big field in the back of the school where 
like we had football practice and like other other kind of sports like track especially because it was like it's really really long field so like this helicopter starts descending you know at some point you know down the field and it's got Rhea Perlman is in it I think she was the one flying the helicopter and then Danny DeVito is with the machine gun <coughs> and he starts shooting at me for some reason and then I kept dodging all of the bullets and somehow made it out alive. But yeah, that was my dream. I think the only dream I've ever had was Rhea Perlman and or Danny DeVito. And well, they that, were trying to kill me. That's good, because I was kind of worried when we started this that it was going to be some kind of weird sex dream with uh, Rhea Perlman and Danny DeVito. No. <clears throat> no, not, not nothing like that. But I did have a dream once. <clears throat> Speaking of dreams, I think I mentioned this once before in another episode where... um the guy who played Norm from Cheers, um, yeah, who does make okay. a guest appearance in one of these ep- one of the episodes of Kirsty. Wow. Yeah. Okay. Well, there yeah. you go. Um, <clears throat> so um, George went. Yeah. Yeah, George went, and it was like it was like current George went at the time, like not not like when he was the age he was in Cheers. Um, yeah. And uh, so for some reason. He, we, we, I have no idea why. We were both watching like TV together, but we were both laying in like a really big, like king size bed. And then, like, out of nowhere, we just get into this like extreme screaming fight with each other. Like, I don't even know what it was, but like, fuck you, you piece of shit. It was just like out of nowhere. Like, and then I woke up and it was like, it was bizarre. Um, so you got in a little couple's quarrel with uh, George well, Wendt. No, I don't even think we were in a couple. I think it was just, <laughs> we just happened to be watching TV in a bed for some reason. And then we just got in. I mean, no, like, couple's quarrels are one thing. Like, we, like we were, like, about to, like, murder each other over, you <laughs> know, what the argument. Like, cause it wasn't even an argument. Usually an argument starts with something and then builds up over time. This was literally... Like, we just turned to each other and started screaming. <laughs> I, I got weird dreams. I think you know, part of, you know, I, I'm pretty sure that I'm mentally ill to some extent because I don't think, like, regular people just have dreams like that. Oh, I uh, do. I do. Okay, well, there you go. And I'm not regular either, so it's okay. I don't think anybody well, is a normal person, so it's okay. Um, not really. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I, 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 had, I had dreams when I was in grade school that Will Smith was my best friend. Well, that's pretty awesome. Yeah, and then I I had a dream the other day that uh, that aliens came and abducted my niece, and then I had to adopt my great niece. Mm-hmm. Oh wow! Yeah. So that's... yeah, so so those happen, you know. <laughs> and 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 then I had to show the I had to show the authorities who had my great niece like some kind of papers to prove who I was, and then my my state ID was a. Uh, expired so they didn't believe me and then um oh shit yeah so yeah i had to try to fight and then i grabbed my great niece and just ran away with her (laughs) and i don't know what happened to my niece i think she just is living with aliens now in the dream world um but anyways (laughs) anything else here before we wrap things up matt Nope. Okay, and my, my opinion too, by the way, is nobody should watch Kirsty ever. Yeah. Maybe this was a premonition. Maybe you and maybe you and George went were fighting about the fact that Kirsty existed. <clears throat> Not the person, <laughs> but the TV show. That could be it, actually. <laughs> um. You were watching the episode he guest starred on, and um, he was just really mad that you were watching it. And preferred that you watched an old episode of Cheers or his performance in Granddaddy Daycare. <laughs> <clears throat> That's my theory on it. Um, anyways, folks, uh, if you could, please go to Apple Podcast. Give us a review. I don't care if it's good. I don't care if it's bad. Just give us a review. I appreciate it. And also, um, check out all 2 real com. We've got a lot of links there, so you can check out our our, you know, Patreon, our links to all the different places you can listen to the show, um, our YouTube, our twits and our books, and our grams. 
Mm-hmm. And um, also, you know, just, you know, be good to each other, people. You know, I mean, be as kind to your friends and family as TV Land was to Rhea Perlman, Michael Richards, and especially Kirstie Alley. Yeah. Do it. If your friends are has-beens, you know, give them their own sitcom. If you have that ability. Mm -hmm. And you know what? Wear a mask. If you still have to. (laughs) And, uh... If the guy that knocked up Maddie on this TV show would have worn a condom, there would have been no Arlo. So wear one. Mm-hmm. And you won't have a random kid come to your door 26 years later expecting you <laughs> to be friends with him. And your life will be better for it. Wait, no. <laughs> if you want to have kids, go ahead. I don't care. Kids are great. Right, Matt? Yep. I need to yep. go to bed. <laughs> Until next time, folks. Bye bye. Thanks for listening to All Too Real 2 Podcast, a Cullen Park production. Produced and edited by Michael E. Cullen II. Music by Matthew Hawes. Subscribe and share the show. Visit us at cullenpark.com.